Hey, Savvy Social Workers. Today, we're going to get into a few basic ASWB exam practice questions. So let's go. Question one, a social worker is meeting with a recently divorced mother who seeks advice because she's concerned about her 14-year-old daughter's rebelliousness. During the assessment, the mother reports that the daughter has stayed out past her curfew a few times, talks back to her mother, but gets very good, good grades at school and has made a few new friends. What should the social worker do first? Okay, so automatically we know that this is the first question, and so that means we're going to be looking for the most important thing to do about our priority issue once we identify it. So the social worker is meeting with, so that lets me know that I am in the beginning phase of the helping process, so my focus should be on building rapport and gathering information from my client who is a recently divorced mother who is seeking advice um, because she's concerned about her 14-year-old daughter's behavior. So that is going to be my presenting issue. And just remembering that my client is the recently divorced mother. Um, and so during the assessment, which also lets us know where we are in the helping process, the mother reports that the daughter has stayed out and all the rest of these things. So this is going to be my priority focus. And remember, the priority focus is what we base our answer off of, not why the client is there specifically, but what is the most important thing that needs to be addressed in this session. So again, this is first. So that means we want to do what's most important about the mother reporting these things about the daughter. Would we A, explore, explore whether the girl's rebellion is a result of her developmental stage? She's 14 years old. The behaviors or that she is staying out past curfew. She's talking back, but she's still getting good grades, and she has made some new friends. So we want to pause this just to see what the other answer choices may be. Option B. Give the mother information on children's emotional reaction to divorce. So even though it says appear that this mother is recently divorced, um, we don't want to assume that this that her daughter is acting this way because of the divorce. So I think this would be um, a little premature to give her this information as the first thing to do. Remember, I'm not saying that it's something that we would not do, but the question is asking us what's first, therefore being what's most important. Option C, assist the mother in developing a behavior modification plan for her daughter. Okay, is that going to be the first thing that we're going to do um, when the mother reports this? Do we want to develop a behavior modification plan for the daughter? Will assist the mother in doing that? Um, to help with her daughter's behaviors, or do we want to explore whether this girl's rebellion is a result of her developmental stage, okay? Sometimes the most beneficial intervention with a client is to normalize behaviors that the client believes is pathological, especially one who is otherwise functioning at a high level. So as of right now, she's still making good grades. But what the issue is, is, she has new friends, she's staying out past curfew, and she's talking back to her mother. So first exploring if, this, if the daughter is experiencing normal developmental behaviors would help the mother view the situation as such and find ways to respond accordingly. If then we, um, we don't think that is this, we can now visit the issue of maybe she's acting out because of the recent divorce. Um, after we did this, after we did A is where I would say now we can possibly do C because we know what the issue is. So we would need to know if this is a result of her developmental stage or if it's a result of her emotional reaction to the divorce we would need to know that before anything else, before assisting her in developing a plan 
are just giving information on emotional reactions to divorce and we don't even really know what's going on. So let's explore her stage of development first before we assume anything else, especially because there's nothing in the priority problem that is saying specifically that the girl is upset about the divorce or anything like that. So the answer for this one would be A. Next question. A social worker is conducting an initial interview with a woman who has been feeling anxious and overwhelmed since her recent divorce. She says that she says she doesn't know how to start rebuilding her life and reports feeling intense anger toward her ex-husband, who filed for divorce after falling in love with a co-worker. Partializing the client's treatment goals in this case is most likely to. Okay, so this is the most question. So when I think of most, I think of, okay, what's going to make the most sense? So we have a social worker. She is conducting an initial interview. So that means we're in the beginning, engaging and gathering information. Um, our client is a woman who has been feeling anxious and overwhelmed since her recent divorce. This is our initial situation or the presenting problem. Okay. The priority issue here is she says she doesn't know how to start rebuilding her life and all of such. So the question is asking you, partializing the client's treatment goals in this case. So that means we want to specifically look at what I would call this little snippet of the question because this is all about partializing the client's treatment goals in this case and we want to know it that it is most likely to do what. So if we partialize, take in this case um, that this woman does not know, she's feeling anxious and overwhelmed, she doesn't know how to start rebuilding her life, she's feeling this intense anger um, towards her ex-husband. If we partialize her treatment goals, what is that most likely to do? Why would we most likely do that? A, is it for the client to stop feeling overwhelmed and get over the situation? I'm going to eliminate that one because when we partialize treatment goals, it is not um, to necessarily help someone get over a situation. Encourage B, encourage the client to verbalize her true feelings. Is that why we want to partialize the treatment goals? The treatment goals, um, partializing them really will not have much to do with the client verbalizing her true feelings either. And besides that, she's already kind of um, saying how she feels in regards to her situation. C, engage the client to take control of her healing process. So I'm going to pause this one because if we're partializing the treatment goals, um, is that most likely to engage the client to take control of her healing process? Possibly. Um, but we're looking for the one that makes the most sense. So we're also going to see what D says, which is help the client regain a sense of focus and direction. Okay, so when we're partializing, partializing requires the social worker and the client to develop priorities and distinguish problems that need immediate attention from those that can be dealt with at a later time. So this process is useful for helping a client regain a sense of clarity and focus and feel less overwhelmed by her problems. So let's help the client regain a sense of focus and direction. So we want to partialize her treatment goals. So that means we're just kind of going, going to break them up into smaller objectives so that she can slowly regain her focus. Um, again, C is not completely wrong, but we're looking for what makes the most sense for partializing. And so for that, when we're thinking about partializing, um, given the client situation, we want to help her regain a sense of focus and direction because she's feeling anxious and she's feeling overwhelmed and she doesn't know the priority. She doesn't know how to start rebuilding her life heavy on that. So let's give her a sense of focus and direction because she's specifically telling us she doesn't know how to start rebuilding her life. So engaging her and taking control of her healing process could also be something that um, comes into play, but it's not going to be most likely what we use when we're partializing the client's treatment goals. Next question. A social worker is working with an eight-year-old girl who was recently removed from her home due to severe neglect. 
During sessions, whenever the social worker mentions the girl's parents, she becomes withdrawn and stops engaging with the social worker until the subject is changed. What is the best way for the social worker to respond? So this is the best question. So that means I'm going to meet the client where she is and do what's most beneficial for the client with my response. So I am working with, so that lets me know that I am in the middle phase of the helping process um, with this um, eight-year-old client who was recently removed due to severe neglect, which is going to be my presenting problem. So we do want to pay attention that she is eight years old and she was recently removed from her home. And of course, it was due to severe neglect. All right. So now during my sessions, whenever I bring up her parents, she becomes withdrawn and stops engaging until I change the subject. And yes, I am personalizing this situation because it just helps me to relate better and helps me to get to my answer when I um, interchange the social worker with myself and put myself live in the situation. So now the question is asking me for the best way for me to respond. So meeting the client where she is, Clearly, she doesn't want to talk about her parents. So what is going to be, be the most beneficial way for me as a social worker to respond to this? Is it A, avoid talking about the traumatic subject for a few sessions? Well, I'm definitely not going to avoid talking about it because I'm already working with her. If this was the beginning phase of the helping process, then A could be a plausible answer. But because I'm already in the intervention um, stage with her, already working with her, um, I'm not going to just stop talking about the reason why she's here for services. Um, so I that's not going to be the best way for me to handle this situation. B, pursue alternative methods for handling the trauma like play or art therapy. She's eight years old, so that is very well something that I could do. So I'm going to pause that. Or C, ask the client if she misses being at home. Is asking the client if she missed being at home, is that going to address the fact that whenever I talk about her parents, she changed the subject? I mean, as she gets quiet um, or stops engaging until the subject is changed, that is not going to address that. And it probably will cause her to shut off even more if I'm asking her about whether it be her parents or her being at home. The girl needs to be able to express her feelings about her current situation in a healthy way. Because she is struggling to express herself verbally, the best response is to try engaging her in alternative communication methods like visual art, drama, or even imaginative play. The social worker should avoid overt discussion of the topic for a while, but continue to create opportunities to invite the girl to share her feelings in other ways. So we don't have to specifically be verbalizing it to the child, but we still want to create opportunities for the discussion to take place. The girl may feel guilty about talking about her parents' neglect and whether she misses being at home. So we don't want to um, continue to push that if she's already becoming withdrawn and um, not engaging whenever I'm bringing up the subject surrounding her parents. So the best response for the social worker and what's most beneficial for the client in this case is B. A social worker is meeting with a client who was re referred by her primary doctor due to difficulty sleeping, a generally anxious mood, and a sense of feeling helpless and lost. She says that she has felt this way for a long time and that she can't really connect them to any specific event in her life. After ruling out the possibility that the client is having any suicidal ideation, what should the social worker do next? So, of course, this is the next question. We want to pay attention to what's already been done by the social worker, if anything, which it tells me that I have already ruled out the possibility of suicidal ideation. So that means I've already done a suicide risk assessment. So now I am meeting with this client. So that tells me, again, I am in the beginning phase of the helping process. And so this client was referred by her primary doctor due to difficulty sleeping and all of the symptoms, which would be my presenting issue because this is why she is here, okay? She says she has felt this way for a long time and she can't really connect none of these symptoms to any specific event in her life, okay? So this question gives us a lot of signs and symptoms, so we know that it's going to be a unit two question, um, and so we want to pay attention to 
um, specifically the signs and symptoms when we know that it's a unit two question because our answer is going to be based off of those signs and symptoms. Even in addressing the priority problem, we still have to consider the presented signs and symptoms that are giving, given to us. So we see the signs and symptoms that she has, and we have already did a suicide risk assessment because it says we already ruled out the possibility of her having any suicide ideation. What are we going to do next about the fact that she has felt this way for a long time and she really doesn't, you know, we don't know where these feelings are coming from? A, will we begin psychotherapy with the client? Is that the immediate next thing to do? Let's pause it because we've done the assessment already. B, assist the client with identifying potential sources of her depressed mood and anxiety symptoms. We can also pause that because the fact that she can't really connect them to any specific event in her life, we may want to um, assist her with identifying potential sources that causes her to be depressed. Maybe she just needs some assistance with that. And C, discuss with the client her own interpretation of her symptoms. That is definitely something that we can do, but that for sure will not be the very next thing we do after we do a suicide risk assessment, okay? So all of these are good answers. All of these are things that we could do, but remember we're doing exactly what comes next after the suicide risk assessment after we rule out that she's not suicidal what are we going to do next are we going to just jump into being uh, beginning psychotherapy with this client or are we going to assist her with identifying potential sources of her symptoms now keep in mind that we are just meeting with this client so I can tell you we are not going to just jump and begin psychotherapy this is where the helping process really comes into play because I'm in the beginning phase with this client and so I'm not just going to um, begin psychotherapy with her after I um, complete the suicide risk assessment. I Once I rule that out, I still need to gather more information. And so gathering more information would definitely um, constitute the answer being B. So after conducting a suicide risk assessment, the social worker should, again, begin to assess and explore potential sources of the client's priority problems. This will meet the client where she is, and aid the therapeutic process of beginning psychotherapy with the client um, when it's that time. The client has already said that she cannot connect her symptoms to any life event, so discussing her interpretation would not be effective at this time. So gathering information to help us lead into psychotherapy would be the next thing we do before we just jump into psychotherapy, and for that reason, B is the answer. So my savvy social workers, I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, let me know in the comment. Please be sure to like this video before leaving the video. Share it with other colleagues who you feel like this could be helpful to. Um, and if you are not subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for your support. You don't understand how this allows me to stay motivated and continue to want to bring you quality ASWB practice exam content for the free. So please continue to tune in and continue to support and let's also continue to get those passes the savvy way.